screen here shortly. And these sessions, a little bit later in the chat feature, I'll post the websites that all of these sessions um, are will be available to. So once the session is done and recorded, it's usually available on the website within about 24 hours. So we're going to go ahead and go forward today. Today, our presenters are Jason and Vanessa. We also have Kevin Tosic. He's our paramedicine faculty extraordinaire. So he, along with myself, will help kind of monitor the chat. So if you have any questions during this time, feel free at any point in time to unmute yourself and ask a question. Otherwise, go ahead and pop your question into the chat and we'll make sure that we address that. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the floor, floor over to our first presenter, Jason. So Jason, I'll let you go ahead, do a brief introduction on yourself and let you get started on your topics for the day. Thank you. And Jason, I think you need to unmute yourself. Still muted, Jason. You know what? I think let's see if I can do this. Great. Can everybody hear me now? Sorry about that. You're on. Okay. Sorry about some technical difficulties there, but can everyone see my screen? Oh, shucks. There we go. Your screen's up now, Jason. Okay. Is there a lag on the voice? I, I noticed that um, I lost some of the video feed on. You're a little glitchy right now. Jeez, hold on one second, okay? Okay. Tatum, can you hear me? I can hear you. You're perfect. Okay, great. Sorry about that. I think we're having some bandwidth issues. Okay, um, my name is Jason. Um, I'm a nursing student at Paradise Valley Community College in Northern Arizona University. Graduating in December. Um, just a little bit about me. Um, I'm originally from Kealakekua, which is a city on the Big Island of Hawaii. I currently work as a pharmacy technician at TVCC and at NAU. When I'm not working or at school, I um, I enjoy spending time with my wife, daughter, and my dog, Bailey. Okay, so last week we covered what is diabetes. Just to do a brief recap, diabetes is a lack of insulin production or an inability to use insulin, a hormone that your body uses to use glucose or sugars from food. And as a result of these insulin irregularities, your body can have too much glucose in the blood so that the body can't use it all, which is a state called hyperglycemia, or too little glucose, which is a condition called hypoglycemia. Some common medications that we use to regulate diabetes. Here are the common medications that we'll cover today. For type one diabetes, we'll be covering insulin, which can be broken up into rapid acting, short acting, Intermediate acting, okay, thanks for the chat tip. For type 2 diabetes medications, we'll be covering, um, we'll be covering metformin, uh, sulfonylureas, which include glyph. <laughs> GLP-1 agonists, which include Trulicity, Victoza, and Ozempic, 
and SGLT2 inhibitors, which include Farsiga, Invokana, and Jardians. Okay, so for type 1 diabetes, it's a lifelong state where the body doesn't make enough insulin for what it needs. Um, these patients really need to monitor their glucose multiple times per day and also take daily insulin injection supplements and a controlled diet to make sure that your levels of glucose in the blood are constant and under control. So talking about insulin briefly, insulin is a hormone that's produced by your pancreas and what it does produces of glucose in the body. Insulin is available for home use as a subcutaneous injection. And what that means is that we're injecting it into the layer of fat, which is right between your skin and muscle, or as an insulin pump, which gives you a steady dose throughout the day. Now, the four types of insulin, like I said, that we'll be covering today are rapid acting, short acting, intermediate acting, and long acting insulins. Most insulin that you can buy at the pharmacy is available in a vial, which you drop with a syringe or in a pen, uh, which can be used to administer a specific dose using a dial on the side through a replaceable pen needle cap. Some patients find the pen form to be a bit easier because the medication doesn't need to be drawn up before it's injected. You just have to adjust the dial. So some general safety precautions regarding insulin. You should always follow all directions from your provider on the prescription label or um, that came with the medication guides. You should always try to plan ahead. Jason, if you can hear me, I think we lost your audio. everyone we appreciate your patience hang on one second um jason like trisha said we seem to have lost your audio so if you're able to let us know that you can hear this with a little message in the chat feature we might head to we'll give you a minute if we don't hear you come back we might head early to vanessa's portion um, and then hopefully be able to circle back to you All right, so we seem to have lost Jason. So Vanessa, I think we're going to go ahead and hand this over to you, Vanessa. Um, give me one second and I'm just going to move the presenter role to you. All right. Vanessa, let's go ahead and have you start trying to share your screen. Okay, what do you guys see? Do you see the PowerPoint? We sure do. Complications yes, we of do. diabetes. Okay, great. Thanks, um, Vanessa, for jumping on. We appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm covering complications of diabetes. 
Um, a little bit about myself is my name is Vanessa Zidel. Um, I became an EMT in 2019. I went straight from EMT school to paramedic school, which I'm set to graduate this May. Um, I just recently received or got a job at AMR that I'll be starting this month. Um, my future plan is to do the bridge program to RN after I have a little bit of experience as a paramedic under my belt. Um, and I have two kids, a 16 year old daughter and an 11 year old son. So what this is basically telling you is that cardiac cardiovascular disease is the top killer of diseases for everybody, even with people without diabetes. Um, what you see on the screen is estimated deaths per 100,000 people. And as you can see, cardiovascular disease um, is the highest. So because, sorry, I moved this thing out of my way. Okay, because of that, uh, it is the most common complication of diabetes. So if you have diabetes, you are nearly two times more likely to die from heart disease or stroke. Um, some of the complications include coronary artery disease, uh, strokes, per peripheral vascular disease, and then again, heart attacks are the most common cause of death in participants with diabetes. So some signs and symptoms to look for, um, they do differ in women and men. Um, so women, it's been said sometimes like where men might feel like a pressure or like an elephant sitting on their chest, women might just feel short of breath or feel like a minor discomfort. Um, so these just kind of break down a little bit. You know, women could be breaking out into a cold sweat, nauseous, nauseous or lightheaded. Um, again, short of breath with or without chest discomfort, a pressure or squeezing in, uh, in the center of the chest or pain or discomfort in one or both arms, the back, neck, jaw or stomach. Uh, for men, kind of similar lightheadedness, shortness of breath, pain or discomfort in the chest, nausea, sweating for no apparent reason. Um, and then another complication could be depression. So one in four people with diabetes have depression. Some signs of depression um, could be sadness, tiredness. Um, if you have trouble focusing, concentrating, anxiety, isolation, restlessness, worrying, anger, irritability, frustration, pretty much everything that's on here. And it doesn't have to be everything that's on here. Um, it could be a mixture of things. It could be a few things. Um, it could just, you know, if you, feel like this is something that you are concerned about, I would recommend as anybody else would to talk to your doctor about it. Um, there are also some depression hotlines um, in case you do need to seek help. So there's the crisis call center, depression and bipolar support, national hope line network, suicide prevention services depression hotline and Thursday's child national youth advocacy hotline. Another complication of untreated diabetes is erectile dysfunction. Um, so to avoid this, proper diet to keep your blood sugars in check will improve energy levels and mood, which can help reduce the risk of erectile dysfunction. Um, you might also wanna work with a dietitian who is a certified diabetes educator to help adjust your eating style and then cut back on alcohol consumption. So pain, when blood glucose is elevated, it might increase general aches and pains and something called malaise, which has been described as feeling unwell or discomfort. Um, with diabetes, a lot of pain is associated with your legs. So diabetes is often related to leg pain, cramps, leg problems. Um, it's known as peripheral arter arterial disease. Uh, and the arteries, the arteries of the legs and feet become clogged with fatty deposits called plaque, preventing blood flow, flow to these areas. Um, sometimes the condition can be so severe that it might lead to gangrene and amputation if it is left untreated. So eye damage, another complication of diabetes is eye damage. So it's the most common cause of blindness. Uh, permanent damage can be prevented if treated early enough. So it's super important to schedule a yearly eye exam with your ophthalmologist. Kidney damage, uh, that's also a big complication of diabetes. Um, as you can kind of see in the slide, the healthy, the healthy kidney, the way the urine comes in and with the diabetic, the protein leaks. Um, so diabetes is the most common cause of kidney failure, which can lead to somebody having to have dialysis, um, which is basically just blood being removed, being cleaned, and then put back into your body. So you might be wondering why your doctor's checking your urine and drawing the blood during drawing your blood during the year. Um, it is to see how well your kidneys are functioning. And if for some reason they do see signs of kidney damage, your doctor might prescribe a medication called an ACE inhibitor, which can prevent renal disease. 
So these are just some tip, tips to prevent or slow the pro progression of diabetic kidney disease. Um, obviously taking your medications to control high blood pressure, taking any kind of medications you're prescribed by your doctor, um, managing your eating habits, your diet, nutrition, managing your blood glucose levels. Um, if you're overweight or obese, consider what you need to do to lose weight and then getting regular physical activity. Another complication can be something called diabetic ketoacidosis, also known as DKA. Um, so some of the signs and symptoms might be Kuzmal respirations, um, being thirsty or dehydrated, fast heart rate, um, low blood pressure, acidosis, um, a high blood sugar, generally greater than 240, hyperkalemia and polyuria. Um, so D DKA is a complication of diabetes that results from increased level of ketones in the blood, overproduction of ketones, which is a byproduct of the breakdown of fatty acids due to low insulin levels. Um, it is very common, more than 3 million cases per year, and it can be dangerous or life-threatening if left untreated. Um, the little turtle over here kind of tells you high E, so if this happens, you need hydration, insulin, and electrolyte replacement. So this is just kind of a recap of what we've already kind of discussed. Um, diabetes can, especially untreated and, and unmanaged diabetes can damage a lot of different things, your brain, your teeth, your nerves, your kidneys, your heart, your eyes. So I think it's been mentioned previously in other um, meetings that you should follow up with your doctor and, and make sure you maintain a good diet plan. And that's super important. So again, how do you avoid the complications we just discussed? Prevention, you know, watch your diet. Um, regular body checkups with your doctors and then keep your blood sugars under control. Um, also protecting yourself. So people with diabetes are at higher risk of severe COVID-19. So I'm sure everybody's heard this a million times. You need to wash your hands, clean and disinfect, avoid touching your eyes, nose and mouth. Um, but for a while, the general public should be wearing masks to protect themselves and others. You should really make sure you're protecting yourself um, so that you don't put yourself at risk of getting COVID or any airborne issue, illness. Any questions? Okay, I'm gonna I turn it back. Vanessa, yeah, I don't see anything popping up in the chat feature, so I appreciate that. Okay. Um, Jason did try and message me, so he seemed like he had lost internet for a moment, but I think he is back on. So Jason, we are gonna give this a whirl again and circle back to you. So let's go ahead and have you start sharing your screen. Okay, great. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> it happens, not a worry. Yeah, okay. So we're just gonna skip back um, through I'm not sure when the uh, feed actually cut out, but I think it was when we we're talking about um, administering insulin. So that's where we'll start. So as I was saying, um, in for insulin, you need to try and keep it at room temperature away from light and heat. Um, and the duration that you can keep it at room temperature and the temperature range do vary by product. Uh, but just as a general rule, keep it out of sunlight. Um, you should always use a new needle each time that you administer an injection. You should rotate your injection sites as directed. So what I put up on the screen here is the most commonly used sites. Um, if you're injecting yourself, the most common area is probably going to be around your middle, uh, around your midsection, and also on the tops of your thighs. Um, and then they say to rotate your um, injection sites using your finger as a guide. So if you inject yourself, um, inject the subsequent injection about one finger width away, and that'll um, keep it from scarring or having any sort of adverse reaction there. Should always dispose of your needles after each injection in a puncture resistant container, uh, often called a sharps container, which is that red container on the lower right. Um, in terms of insulin types, the first type of insulin that we can talk about today is rapid acting insulin. And it's the brand names for it are Humalog or Novalog. Um, it's 
used as a mealtime insulin, so it'll act right away. So it's really important that your food is already on the table before you inject yourself because it'll start working really quickly and it typically lasts less than three hours. It's available either in pens or vials. The type of insulin we'll talk about is short acting insulin. Well, we may have lost Jason's audio again. We will give it just a moment. Oh, Jason, we hear you again. Okay, go ahead. Okay, <laughs> so sorry. Um, and it typically lasts less than three hours. Again, it's available in vials or pens. The third type of insulin, intermediate acting insulin, which is sold in the brand names Humulin N or Novolin N. Um, and this is a longer acting insulin. It typically can last for about 12 hours and it takes effect in about 90 minutes. So people usually use a combination of the rapid or short acting insulin with an intermediate or a long acting insulin to really give themselves good uh, blood sugar control. An important thing with the intermediate acting insulin is it's usually dosed once a day in the morning. And if you're dosing yourself in the morning, make sure that you're eating lunch with a lot of carbohydrates um, to prevent hypoglycemia in the afternoon. So it'll prevent that blood sugar drop um, because it takes about five to six hours to really hit its peak. Okay. We're also gonna talk about long acting insulin and these are sold under the brand names Levamir, Lantus, Tejeo, and Traceba. Um, and these are only available from brands right now, so they are more um, pricey option, but the coverage for them does last for 24 to 42 hours. So it'll give you quite a lot longer window of release and it doesn't really peak. So you don't have the same hypoglycemia episodes that you might with a different type of insulin. Okay, now moving on from insulins, we're gonna talk type 2 diabetes. And here's an overview um, of type 2 diabetes. So their bodies do produce insulin, but it's usually not enough to meet all the body's needs. So your blood glucose levels will still be elevated because there's just not enough insulin to get all that um, sugar to the cells. So for, the, for these medications, they usually work on five principles. They're either gonna reduce the amount of glucose that you're absorbing from your food. They're going to improve the way your body produces insulin or boost production of insulin. They can reduce um, the amount of glucose by turning it into urine and letting you um, waste it in the toilet. They can help the pancreas release the right amount of insulin and kind of dial that in a bit better or some of these people also require additional insulin hormone injections, just like we saw with the type one diabetes. And usually uh, for type two, um, as if you do see progression with it, it's gonna be a combination of medications. So that's really what we're managing there. So some general guidelines for taking diabetes medications. Um, number one is that these medications really change the way that your body reacts to medications. So it's really important to tell all of your healthcare providers that you're taking the medication. And a great practice is to wear a medical alert bracelet. Just notify medical professionals that you have diabetes in the event of an emergency. You should always ask your provider what to do if you happen to miss a dose. Um, but as a rule, never double up on doses to make up for a missed dose. So in other words, if you miss a dose, don't take two the next day um, because that will you cause your blood sugar to drop quite a bit. Another thing is that because these medications are so dependent on really good adherence and strict adherence, it's a good idea to buy a pill organizer just to help you remember to keep the medications on schedule and to make sure that you've taken that day's dose. The first medication that we're gonna talk about is metformin. This is one of the older medications. And really what metformin does is it reduces the amount of 
um, glucose that your body absorbs from food while also reducing the amount of glucose that your liver makes. Um, generally, it's a good rule to take this at the same time every day with plenty of fluids. And oftentimes people take it with food um, just because it could upset your stomach. And then like with all of these medications, you should call your provider if you should ever feel faint, sweaty, confused, or have any breathing difficulties. The second medication type we'll talk about is sulfonylureas. And these include glimepiride, glipizide, and gliburide. And what these do is they, they stimulate your pancreas organ more insulin. Um, so for these, you make sure that you're taking them at the same time every day with plenty of fluids. Um, they are known to cause hypoglycemia. So make sure that you're still eating on a schedule and um, make sure that you're not skipping meals. Um, they can cause some sun sensitivity and they do have a reaction with alcohol. So it's important that you reduce the amount of alcohol that you're consuming with them. And then as with metformin, make sure you're calling your provider should you happen to feel faint, sweaty, confused, jittery, or have any breathing difficulty. The next two medication types we'll talk about are newer medication types. The first one is called a GLP-1 agonist. And the brand names for this are Victoza, Trulicity, and Ozempic. Um, generally, as you can see, they're sold as a pen um, dispenser, and you're dispensing it once a week. You're taking it once a week. What it does is it slows the rate of um, the, the way that your body takes in uh, food. So it'll make you less hungry and it'll slow your stomach down, which reduces the amount of glucose that's hitting your blood at one time. An added side effect of this medication is that it does prevent um, or promote weight loss um, because it controls your hunger instinct. And it also increases the amount of um, uh, insulin that your pancreas is secreting. <clears throat> the second type of medication we can talk about is our SGLT2 um, transporters, um, which are sodium glucose transporters. What they do is they prevent the kidneys from holding on to glucose. The brand names for this are Orsiga, Invulcana, Jardians, and Stellatra. So instead of um, using more glucose um, for your cells, it actually creates, um, it puts it, it creates it as urine. So you're basically um, wasting it instead of um, having it sit in the blood where it's not um, going to be as effective due to the reduced insulin uh, capacity. Because they don't rely on your body's ability to use insulin, they have a reduced chance of hypoglycemia compared with other medications. And they're considered to be a safer uh, choice in the event that you have diabetes plus cardiovascular disease or kidney disease. So that'll do it for the medications. In general, um, with all diabetic medications, you really wanna make sure that you're notifying somebody, whether it's your provider or pharmacist, for advice, should you feel faint? Uh, should you feel unusually sweaty? Um, should you have new onset confusion? If you have any new or sudden pain in your uh, abdomen, on your stomach or on your back, if you have a rash or if you have breathing difficulties, um, because it could be the sign of a significant reaction to the medication. So these are some diabetes education programs um, for Phoenix. And does anyone have any questions? Jason, it looks like someone asked if you would show that last slide again. Oh, sure. Um, I didn't actually see that. Hold on one second. Let me share my screen again. Yeah, the one that had the resource numbers. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm.
So yeah, I'm not sure if everybody can see that. Okay, great. Yep, we can see that. So why don't you just leave that up for a moment while you do, Trisha? Absolutely. I see that you answered the one question from Irene in the chat box, but just in case anyone else didn't see that, I thought it might be worthy for you just to, because um, we get questions about supplements all the time. I know at least in the fitness center, and that's something that we certainly don't uh, have the authority and even the knowledge to respond to. So maybe you want to respond to the idea of supplements specifically for diabetics um, in regards to wellness. Um, I went ahead and put a chat in because um, you were already on your session, but I didn't want to ignore Irene's comment, but I don't know if you have anything else to add, Jason, um, besides obviously talking to your physician and your pharmacist about um, supplementations and drug interactions. Um, I, and from your standpoint, because um, since you work in the pharmacy, maybe you have some more um, recommendations, but I know in general, I, I typically am okay with a multivitamin as long as there's no other drug interactions um, potentially or other contraindications. But I know I wasn't sure if Irene was like maybe wondering about other types of herbals because I know there's marketed products like cinnamon <laughs> that helps yes, to lower blood really. sugar and things like that. And I usually tell people to stay away from them because sometimes I've had so many patients get hypoglycemia when they're taking their meds and then they start taking cinnamon and then their blood sugar goes too low. Do you have any other, other experiences too, Jason? Yes, I would definitely agree with that. Um, yeah, a lot of um, herbal supplements actually do interfere with the way the medications work in the body. So especially if you're not communicating it with your provider, it can be, um, it can cause quite a bit of trouble uh, taking any herbal supplement and any medication because there are quite a few interactions. Teas are generally okay. Um, so if you did want to make yourself um, a tea, that would be fine. But if you're talking about herbal supplements off the shelf, those do get a little bit tricky to use with medication. Yeah, my uh, concern and my question was also with in uh, the timing of taking them. Uh, for example, we were taking our medications and then the supplements, you know, right after, and then it dawned on me that, well, maybe, I don't know, the absorption of the medication um, with too much for the body to absorb so we kind of started splitting that off and I, you know, I just was curious as to, is that a better approach to the supplements that, well, the doctor has approved, you know, like vitamin D, a multi uh, vitamin supplement. In general, um, it's not a good idea to take um, anything with a medication. You should probably separate it by at least half an hour. Okay, good. Yeah, we started doing that before. Like I said, we were taking it together. Then it, I don't know, just something clicked in my head that, well, maybe we should separate them. So we started. Yeah. Okay, yeah, great. Thank even, you. Uh -huh. And even things you don't think about, like um, if you're taking ibuprofen or an antacid and medication, those two can interfere with each other. So you definitely want to make sure that you're talking your, to your provider about how it should be spaced out. A pharmacist can also answer the same question, but as a general rule, um, especially with say cholesterol meds, they should not be taken with an antacid um, generally because they can interfere with each other and it does interfere with absorption. So you're definitely on the right track there. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Vanessa, I got a question in a private chat. Um, I'm going to send it to you first, and then Jason, maybe you can follow up. But someone was asking, saying, because I'm putting this one to you, Vanessa, because you were talking about some complications, and they're saying they seem to be having some slow um, wound healing on their feet, like some blisters that just kind of don't want to heal. And so again, I, I don't have as much knowledge as you will. So I'll let you address that. But I do know that slow wound healing could be part of a complication for diabetes, along with so a slow wound um, healing and beginning feelings of like numbness and tingling. So again, don't know if we're leading into neuropathy, but maybe you could talk about um, and we're getting, and just so everyone knows, we hope you join next week because there will be a portion specifically about foot care, but maybe Vanessa, you can kind of touch on those things regarding wound healing, foot care, neuropathy, that seem to be three things that came up in the private chat. 
Um, yeah, I mean, kind of like I said, it's it's super important to schedule doctor's appointments for that reason. Um, diabetics do have a lot of issues with their feet, and so I think it's really important that if they if they are experiencing things that are numbness, tingling, that kind of stuff, that it's super important that they follow up with their doctor. Um, I don't know, Kevin, if you have anything you want to add, or Jason, if you guys want to add it, I just, my personal opinion would be that they need to follow up with their doctor. Yeah, definitely. Um, when we're talking about diabetes and foot care, one of the problems that people have with di uh, diabetes as the disease progresses generally is that um, blood flow through small um, arterioles are really, uh, which are the little blood vessels in your body, are obstructed um, and the blood doesn't go through them as easily. We see that a lot in eyes uh, for your retinas. We see that a lot in feet because um, the blood doesn't get out to your feet quite so well. Um, and what that does is it slows down the body's ability to heal itself. The secondary problem with that is that uh, diabetes also causes um, the inability to feel with your feet as well. So sometimes you might not realize that you've hurt your foot and that causes these wounds to generally get worse because they're both slow healing and also you can't feel them as well. So yeah, definitely both things that are important. Uh, foot care is always critical for diabetes patients. We recommend um, really well-fitting shoes and uh, thick socks. Hopefully that was helpful. Sorry, <laughs> that went on too long. No, I appreciate that. Thank you, Jason. I think you addressed that really well. Um, do we have any other questions in the chat? If we don't, I mean, we do also have a couple other wonderful faculty on the line with Tricia and Kevin. So I don't know if you guys want to share any tidbits, wealth of information regarding um, any of the topics covered today. I will say well, diabetes is something that we just, we got to keep an eye on. So diabetes complicates everything in life, unfortunately. So there are certainly, uh, regardless if you're type 1 or type 2, there are certain things that we can certainly do to, to put ourselves in the best position possible when we're trying to manage diabetes. So diet, exercise, and following physician's orders are probably the, the most important things we can do. Sorry, go ahead, Trish, my apologies. Oh, no, I was going to say pretty much the same thing. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> um, I, I would say the only comment I had was, um, like you mentioned, the holistic approach to care um, for total wellness for diabetes. Um, but when you do have like wounds and things like that, I think blood sugar control at that time is so important because if your blood sugars are running high, it will slow down your wound healing. So optimal control, like Kevin mentioned, through, you know, diet and um, following your doctor's advice, taking your medicine properly, and really keeping a close watch on those blood sugars will also help speed up that wound healing as well as, as Vanessa said, following through with a podiatrist and um, any type of treatment that they're going to recommend for the foot as well. Um, and that goes for any wound too on the body, not, not just the feet, because you can tend to heal a little bit slower. But I think um, Jason and Vanessa did a, a wonderful job presenting um, both those topics today. And and the good news is, um, you know, just following those guidelines that Jason mentioned with the meds and Vanessa for total health. Um, I mean, we can prevent a lot of these things from happening too, like problems with the eyes and nerves and all that through, you know, just following closely, like you mentioned with your providers. All right, we'll give it just another moment, but like I said, please feel free to unmute um, yourself if you have a question or certainly feel free to put something in the chat feature. If you have a question for any of our presenters, Jason, Vanessa, and of course, um, Trisha, Kevin, you know, any of those, if you have a question, we'll give it another minute or so. And otherwise, while you're still on, again, um, we have one more session coming up next week, which just goes a little bit more into general care, exercise and prevention, foot care, um, other things that relate to diabetes. So we certainly hope that you join us next week as well. I am not seeing anything in the chat feature, so 
Oh, thank you. Hold on one moment and I will post the link for you for where you can find those recordings. Let me copy and paste that. So all previous recordings can be found at the link that I just posted in the chat feature, paradisevalley.edu forward slash journey to wellness. You will find the previous recordings and this recording should be uploaded by tomorrow morning. And there's also a little bit of other support material that's on there for you. So we thank you for joining us. We certainly hope to see you next week as well for our last session. We'll hang on for a few more minutes. So as people are logging out, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to speak up. Um, and we hope we see you next week. Thank you. And someone asked on the chat about next week's, week's session. It will be again on Thursday at 1 p.m. And you can use the same exact WebEx link to join it next week as well. Great job, Vanessa and Jason. Yeah, you guys did awesome. Good job, guys. Thank okay. you, guys. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye, all. Well, thanks again, and see you next week, Jason, again. <laughs> yeah. I will go I ahead and stop the technical recording. issues. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, it happens at my house, too, sometimes, especially <laughs> when my daughter's on homeschooling days. It's like it pulls the... Uh,